What is going on, marvelous people? This is Medicosis Perfect Nellis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, it's time for a new video in my playlist called Ever Wonder Why? Ever Wonder Why Multiple Myeloma Has a Low Anion Gap? Let's talk about that. As you know, the anion gap is the difference between the unmeasured anions and the unmeasured cations. It also happens to equal the measured cations minus the measured anions. The name of this playlist came from this beautiful book. We have four types of acid base disorders. Respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic acidosis is divided into high anion gap metabolic acidosis and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Based on what? Based on the serum anion gap. If we have watched my previous videos in this playlist, we have talked about HAGMA and why it has a high anion gap but a normal serum chloride, whereas NAGMA has a normal anion gap but an elevated serum chloride. Put differently, HAGMA is normochloremic, while NAGMA is hyperchloremic. What the flip is the serum anion gap? Here is the deal. It's in the nature of things that the total number of cations in your body have to equal the total numbers of anions in your body, whether you're healthy or sick. So the number of cations in your body equal the number of anions in your body. Therefore, cations include what? Measured and the unmeasured cations. Anions are the measured and the unmeasured. Let's play with some algebra. The unmeasured minus the unmeasured equals the measured minus the measured. Anions minus cations, but here's cations minus anions. In other words, the anion gap equals the unmeasured anions minus the unmeasured cations or the measured cations minus the measured anions. What are your unmeasured anions? There are many, including albumin, organic acids, phosphate, sulfate. What are your unmeasured cations? Calcium, potassium, magnesium. So what the flip did you measure? From the cations, I measured the sodium. From the anions, I measured chloride and bicarbonate. What's the normal anion gap? Anything 12 or below is fine. So what is the issue with multiple myeloma? Oh, by the way, I've talked about multiple myeloma in a video in my hematology playlist. It was such a magnanimous video. Basically, in multiple myeloma, you are dishing out tons of plasma cells. Who is dishing out? The bone marrow. What do plasma cells secrete? Antibodies. Gamma globulins. Your blood is made of what? Plasma and cells. The plasma. Water and proteins. The proteins. Albumin and globulin. The globulin. Alpha globulin, beta globulin, gamma globulin. Which ones are the antibodies? Gamma globulins. How many types of antibodies do you have? Many, including IgG, IgM, IgA, IgE, IgD. Multiple myeloma is a monoclonal gammopathy. What a beautiful word used to describe an ugly disease. What does monoclonal mean? One thing and one thing only. What is gammopathy? A pathology of gamma. Gamma what? Gamma globulin. Oh, you have proliferation of gamma globulin only? Yes. How about your alpha globulin? Fine. Beta globulin? Fine. Albumin? Don't blame it on my albumin. It's only the gamma globulin. Normally, you have lots and lots of albumin. Albumin is the most abundant plasma protein. And then the globulins are alpha, beta, and gamma. These are your globulins. As you see, albumin should be more abundant normally. However, in multiple myeloma, look at this. All of your resources are going to make gamma globulins. We call this the M spike. It looks like an M. But please don't say, oh, it's the M spike, therefore the patient has too much IgM. Shut up. It's mostly IgG or IgA. Since all of the resources are going to make gamma globulin, what's going to happen to albumin? Oh, it is lower than normal. Because economics is the study of the use of scarce resources which have alternative uses. Imagine that Toyota Motor Company is making Toyota Corolla and Toyota Camry only. So only two types of cars. For some reason or another, the executive at Toyota decided to make 10x what they used to make of the Corolla. What do you think is going to happen to the production of Camry? It's going to decrease. Why? Because we have scarce resources. The iron, the steel, the aluminum, the plastic, the rubber, the oil, the pistons. All of them are scarce resources which have alternative use. I can use them to make a Corolla or a Camry. If I'm making more Corolla, the Camry production is going to suffer. Well, no kidding. Same thing happens in your body when you have multiple myeloma. Your body, for some crazy reason, decided to make too much gamma globulin. What do you think is going to happen to the albumin production? It's going to decrease. Because we live in a world of scarce resources which have alternative uses. After all, you only have one liver. Do you remember the anion gap? Yeah. It's the unmeasured anions minus the unmeasured cations or the measured cations minus the measured anions. 
amazing. In multiple myeloma, what happens to albumin? Oh, it's suffering. Why? Because we are making too much globulin and the globulin production has crowded out the albumin production. Albumin is going to go down. What's going to happen to this entire thing? The unmeasured anions are going to decrease. When this part decreases, this part stays normal. What's going to happen to anion gap? It's going to shrink. It's going to narrow. It's going to decrease. Don't believe me? Consider this. Imagine that the patient before multiple myeloma, like, was a normal subject with an anion gap of 10, and the 10 happened to be 15 minus 5. 15 minus 5 is 10. Okay. But now I have multiple myeloma. What happened to my albumin? It decreased. So this 15 is not going to stay 15. It's going to become something like 10. Now 10 minus 5 equals 5. So what happened to the anion gap? It went down. Another way of saying the same thing is in multiple myeloma, you are having tons of M protein, usually IgG antibodies, gamma globulins, which act as cations. And when your body has too much cations, what will your body do to preserve electroneutrality? Oh, my body's gonna retain more negatives. Since I have too much positive, I gotta retain too much negative so that they balance each other out. When chloride goes up, what's gonna happen to this? This is gonna increase. And when the measured anions increase, what's gonna happen to the anion gap? It's gonna drop as well. You can look at it in a different way. When you are having too much cations, what's gonna happen to your unmeasured cations, such as the IgG? They will increase, and when this goes up, what's going to happen to the anion gap? It's going to decrease as well. So in multiple myeloma, what's happening to my unmeasured anions? Oh, they included albumin, and albumin is going down. As albumin goes down, what's going to happen to your anion gap? It's going to shrink. Or you can say it in a different way. I have too much IgG, and they are positive. They attract chloride, which is the negative. Chloride is going to go up, and the anion gap is going to shrink to compensate. Most professors and physicians are woke and they don't grasp this basic facts. Even those who know that multiple myeloma might decrease your anion gap have no idea why. So this is your chance to flex on your attendant. But hey, medicosis, I'm not here to flex. I'm here to help patients. How is this going to help me take care of patients? Easy, my man. Take it nice and easy. Question one. A patient with an untreated, aggressive multiple myeloma present with an anion gap of 12. Also, they are vomiting and they are tachypnic. The question is, do they have a metabolic acidosis? Please answer. Question number two. You have two patients, patient A and patient B. They have the same stinking anion gap. Patient A has multiple myeloma. Patient B does not have multiple myeloma. The question is, which patient has a worse metabolic acidosis? Question number three, can multiple myeloma on its own widen the anion gap? And the last question, can multiple myeloma cause normal anion gap metabolic acidosis? So let's answer this. The patient has an aggressive multiple myeloma, untreated. So the patient is not taking chemotherapy. Okay, present with an anion gap of 12. That's a normal anion gap or so they say. The patient is vomiting and hyperventilating. Does the patient have a metabolic acidosis? The answer is yes. Because in multiple myeloma, what do we expect the anion gap to be? To be low, to be something like 6, 5, 3, 2. But 12 for a multiple myeloma patient is higher than it should be. So what is elevating my anion gap? It must be the addition of an unmeasured anion. Oh, and that's the cause of the metabolic acidosis. Don't believe me? Why do you think the patient is vomiting? Because when you have metabolic acidosis, there is too much acid in your system. What will your GI tract try to do? It will try to get rid of an acid called hydrochloric acid in your stomach. That's why acidotic patients vomit, to get rid of the acid, to try to ameliorate the acidosis. Why do you think the patient is hyperventilating? Because when I have metabolic acidosis, there is too much acid in my system. The lungs will try to do their job to get the carbon dioxide out because carbon dioxide is an acid. When you wash out my CO2, this will try to mitigate my metabolic acidosis. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. And this is the difference between a competent physician and a doofus. A competent physician will figure out the diagnosis in a second. Meanwhile, the doofus will waste time and money ordering every lab test in the books. And at the end of the day, they will act as a doofus pathologist who says, um, the sample was insufficient. I could not determine if it was malignant or benign. Shut up. 
Second question, patient A and patient B the same anion gap. One has multiple myeloma, the other one does not. Which patient has a worse metabolic acidosis? Now, yep, you guessed it, patient A. Why? Because multiple myeloma usually decreases your anion gap. If your anion gap is 15, it means you've added way, 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 way more unmeasured anions than the other person with no multiple myeloma. Another way of saying the same thing, imagine this patient's anion gap was two, but then after the acidosis, the anion gap became 15. This is totally different from this patient whose anion gap was about 12 and went from 12 to 15. This one is worse. Question three, can multiple myeloma on its own widen the anion gap? The answer is yes, if it's an IgA light chain. They are considered unmeasured anions. And when you increase the unmeasured anions, this can widen your anion gap. But pay attention, for this to happen, the increase in the IgA light chain has to exceed the drop in albumin in order for you to raise and elevate and widen the gap. Question four, can multiple myeloma cause nagma? Absolutely, because multiple myeloma can cause renal tubular acidosis, especially type one or type two. See what happens when you get your head out of your sphincter? Let's review multiple myeloma from Picmonic. Multiple myeloma is depicted here by MMs. It's a monoclonal plasma cell cancer. Here's a plasma cell plasma TV with plasma cells with the famous clock face chromatin. What do we see? We see the M spike. Here is the M with spikes. There is increased IgG and or IgA. Here is the IgG gold goblin and the IgA apple goblin. On bone marrow biopsy, you see the classic fried egg appearance. There is Rouleau formation. Here is the Rouleau and the classic Benz Jones proteins. In an upcoming video in this playlist, we'll talk about why multiple myeloma causes pseudohyponatremia. If you wanna master acid-base imbalances and learn more about the henderson hasselbalch the Kaiser-Bleich, the base excess, base deficit, urine anion gap, stool osmolar gap, serum osmolar gap, and others, check out my acid-base imbalance course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. And use discount code histamine to get a 40% discount towards anything on my website, available for the next 17 students only. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses, go to Picmonic for some doozy animated medical mnemonics. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.